Welcome to the world of shadows, where demons gather. Today we're going to be talking about the demons that they're newly designed by Masayuki Doi for Shin Megami Tensei 5. We currently know of Daimon, Amanazako, Angel, and Finn McCool. You may be saying, bro, what about the other demons? Uh, Dog, Angel, Red Girl, and uh, Pata probably. Well... They aren't named yet. And moreover, I'm like 90% sure Angel, Egypt, and Japan are all alignment reps, plus heroin? I mean, maybe not heroin, I don't know. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about Daimon, Amanazako, Angel, and Finn McCool. Instead of how I ship Red Girl with Nahabino. Speaking of shipping, I ship my Atlas merch out of Japan using today's sponsor, Bai. Bai is the proxy buying service. Atlas revealed some interesting 35th anniversary merch, then Persona 25th anniversary merch, and I don't have to sweat it. I could just use Bai's handy browser extension and, you know, simply go to their website and add it to cart. Now I'm broke and cold, but the merch will keep me warm. Bai allows you to buy from many Japanese retailers, from Makari to Sudigaya to Yahoo Auctions Japan, and all directly from their website or using their browser extension or using their app. And if you make an account with my link, you get a 2000 yen coupon to use on your first purchase. That could mean you buy the boy with an earring plush for only the cost of shipping. Thanks again, Bai, for continuing to support this channel. Now let's talk about Angel. This one was described as the most human out of all the Order of Angels and the Messenger of God. The word Angelos in Greek means messenger, by the way. They also function as guardian angels meant to protect humans and prevent them from straying away from God. The halo is interesting because it's not the generic ring popularized by modern times, but more akin to the 15th century depictions. I say this because around this time, the round halos had some ornamentation, but that's usually not a thing the angels had that was typically reserved for figures like Jesus. This is meant to represent the light of God, by the way. The design seems to have a fierce mask and that weird fierce face is something that's not common for angels in antiquity, but I did find some that actually do have that fierce face on it. The only angels that I could think of off the top of my head are Cabanel's Fallen Angel, which is literally just like Lucifer, and the one at war on the Arc de Triomphe. This design, as of now, seems to be a replacement for the previous angel. The last one used was the one that I like to call the Bondage Angel, probably done to represent angels in a more thematically aligned way for the game. Then there's Diamond. In ancient Greece, this was a lesser nature guiding spirit are some kind of catch-all term for lesser entities. In the Bible, the word is pseudo-adopted, and then by the time you get to the New Testament, it's kind of perverted a bit and comes to mean evil spirits. This demon in SMT5 is just the embodiment of generic demons. As a result, they have the most generic demon design in that sense. I think it's interesting that they are reverting to this ancient way of saying demon, by the way. It's got a pitchfork and I don't know, there's not really a whole lot you can say about it. It just looks like a traditional demon. Now for a big chunky bit of lore, let's talk about Finn McCool. Finn McCool, or Fionn McCool, is a Celtic hero who's got a lot of interesting lore. Fionn is the son of Cool and Morn. These are lovers who eloped, his name coming from the word meaning bright or white, apparently due to his fair skin, his beauty, and the way his hair turned prematurely white or fair. Fionn's father was a man named Cool who was in love with Fionn's mother, Myrna, and she was the daughter of a druid. When they eloped, Cool became an outlaw because her druid father complained to the High King of Ireland, who then decreed it as such, and he was hunted down. The man who killed Cool is Gold McMorrin, and that guy took leadership of Cool's group, the Fianna, which are a small band of warriors. Meanwhile, Fionn's mother was disowned. She was ordered to be burned at the stake by her father initially, but the High King saved her, and she was instead sent to be looked after by Cool's sister. Fionn's birth name was Diemni, 
which could mean young male deer, which is amazingly represented in Doi's design, by the way. Finn and his brother Tuka were hunted down by Full, the sons of Morna, and many other enemies his father had garnered, so Finn was raised instead by Bodmal and Liath Lucra. Sorry, I'm gonna butcher these names, by the way. <laughs> in the forest of Sliab Bladma, teaching him of war and hunting. He tried to gain favor with all kinds of local kings in his youth, but they would turn him away once they realized that he was indeed the son of Cool. One day, Finn met the poet Finnegus near the river Boyne. Finnegus had spent seven years trying to catch a salmon. This was the Salmon of Wisdom that lived in Fex Pool because it was prophesied that the poet would eat it and gain knowledge. Finnegus caught the salmon and instructed Finn to cook it, but not eat it. Finn cooked the salmon, but burned his thumb, trying to see if it was cooked. He sucked his thumb to ease the pain, and it turns out there was a tiny bit of cooked fish fat on his thumb. And when he did that sucking motion, he actually absorbed all of the wisdom from the fish as it was all concentrated into that one little bit of fish fat. When he served Finnegus the fish, Finnegus noticed that Finn looked more wizened, and upon learning what happened, he gave him the rest of the fish to eat, which gave Finn the knowledge of everything of the world. From then on, Finn would bite his thumb to basically activate this wealth of knowledge. Once he had the thumb of wisdom, he does pretty well for himself. At the age of merely 10, he kills the fire-breathing man of Tuatha de Nanan, and when he did so, he got to lead his father's old group, Defiana. Speaking of deer, remember how I said his original name meant young male deer? Well, he marries a deer. <laughs> he gets these hounds that were once human, but they're now hounds, and they sniff out a deer who they can tell used to be human as well. They bring her to Fionn's land, which turns her human inexplicably. She marries Fionn and gets impregnated with his seed, but the guy who cursed her to be a deer stole her away, and she went missing for years. Later though, the dogs do find Fionn's son as a deer, and that guy becomes a hero too, a super epic one. Here's a picture of him playing his harp. <laughs> look at the person on the right, they look like they're saying, oh god, please, don't, Oshin. By the way, his name's Oshin. Finn also has one cool story about his death. Apparently, he's not actually dead. He's just sleeping in a cave, surrounded by his warriors, the Fianna. He's said to wake when the door of Fian, or the hunting horde of the Fianna, is sounded three times. I quite like Doi's design, I mentioned the horns, but also note the thumb of wisdom is represented. He's also wielding the hero's signature weapon, and he has the fair skin and the hair the hero is famously described as having. He's also got a pouch. This pouch is likely a reference to the core bulg, or the crane bag. The crane bag is something that didn't originate within McCool's lore, but it's just something that he's noted as having owned. It's made from the skin of a human who was turned into a crane. And before I talk about Amanazako, while writing this script, there was a new trailer and they revealed another new demon. I'm like 100% positive that this demon is Hydra. Johnny Awesome posted an amphora matching the little beard thing. And I noted that it uses poison breath, which is a thing associated with the Hydra. So I'm gonna go over its history briefly. The Lernian Hydra is an offspring of Typhon and Echidna. It's got poisonous breath and toxic blood. Probably why this design evokes the alien from Aliens aesthetic. The Hydra is like a lot of multi-headed things where it has different numbers of heads depending on the source. Looking at you, Cerberus. The head regeneration thing was something added later, by the way, to the lore. The lore became that after a while, every time you cut one head, two heads would take its place. Heracles and his nephew Loleus basically killed it by cutting off the head and cauterizing the wound, preventing it from regrowth. This depiction looks very interesting. I think that for the most part, it is pretty reminiscent of the design as depicted in the amphora that Johnny Awesome posted. There is some ornamentation there, which made me think that it was like a Central or South American snake monster, but I couldn't find anything, so. Okay, so the last demon I wanna talk about is Amanazako. Amanazako is a special goddess whose name quite literally means heaven opposing everything. And they're a weird one. She only appears in the Kujiki, not the Kojiki. In terms of important historical Japanese text, the Nihon Shoki is like the most important. The Kojiki is like mid-tier, and I think the Kujiki is like even lower than that. Amanazako was born from Suzano when he threw up his Aramatama, or the violent slash rough spirit that he had built up inside. So yes, 
She's literally a holy vomit. And yes, she's technically an Aramitama. She's the ancestor of the Tengu, and literally any defiant yokai according to some descriptions, and she's the mother to Amano Jaku. If that name sounds familiar, it's because he's the demon that eats your mom in Shimigami Tensei 1. The Wakan Sansai Zue describes Amanozako as having a furious temper, a beastly head, long nose, long ears, huge fangs that are so strong they can chew metal blades, and she can also fly for thousands of Chinese miles. She's a goddess who goes against conformity and societal norms. She's picky and obnoxious if she doesn't get her way. She's also a trickster and likes to possess the hearts of humans. The weird thing about her is her stories, which there aren't really any, were told long before they were recorded, so the Wakan Sansai Zue's description obviously could be determined by many things. One of those things could have been the hundreds of years between her creation and then, and also another thing could be the fact that Tengu was invented hundreds of years before this book was written. So this could be like a regional description. There's like a million different things. Now looking at Amadazako in Shimigami Tensei 5 and well, she doesn't look like a long eared, long nose, huge fanged thing that could fly for thousands of Chinese mouths. By the way, Chinese mouths is a real thing. Li is the traditional Chinese unit of measuring distance. One Li is about half a kilometer or about 500 yards. I'm not being racially insensitive, I promise. Anyway, the only thing she has in common with the Wakan Zansai Suave description is the long ears and the beastly head. <laughs> I mean, I'm just kidding about that, but you know. There isn't really any other documented description of her besides the one I mentioned, and this sort of thing is contested by Japanese historians pretty often, so the origins are not so clear. She didn't seem to have any real story related to her too. She just kind of existed, her biggest story being her being thrown up. As a result, I can't get too mad at the design anymore because there's like only one popular source for her in describing how she looks and it's a thing that contrasts with someone like Fiona McCool in that there's not a lot of key identifiers to include in the design. So that's all I gotta say about that. There's not a lot more I can say <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed this little uh, short revival of this series. If you want more delving into the origins and comparing them to the Megaton adaptions, let me know. And yes, I will definitely be making a deep dive video to the newest trailer. If you want more reactions, I also live reacted to that trailer with Glib, KDA, and Spider, two of whom are pretty much experts on Megaten, so I'll link that in the description as well. I also talked a lot about the stuff that's going to go into that deep dive vid on Twitter, so if you want to know stuff as soon as I talk about it, then follow me there. And also follow my Twitch. I'm usually freaking out there, so if you want to see me yelling, then go there. Thanks again, Bai, for sponsoring this video, and... Hope you guys enjoyed it. Goodbye, fellow mega tennis. Yeah, okay, that missed again. This is. Uh, let's see what happens here. Let's oh, happens. is he just going right for you? Oh. Whoa, he targeted me straight yeah, up. Yeah, he was just One like, hit, no, we're too. done. Dang. <laughs> so, yeah.